Monday, fam. Hope you all had a lovely weekend. Time to toasty up with some hot news. Before we start, though, I just wanted to ask if you'd be willing to give me a follow over on Twitter. It's where I spend the majority of my time on social media, and it'd be great if we could converse more frequently than just the video uploads here on YouTube. I'm at UF Disciple, so I'll see you there. Hot news time now. Let's start with the hardest news of the day for me at least. I've spent a bit of time praising Elon Musk on hot news because I've genuinely liked the guy and his innovation, but I will announce today that this is the first person that I'm stripping of their Papa title of respect. No more Papa Elon. Let me explain why. We reported on the Thailand cave rescue operation and how Elon was working towards developing a child-sized submarine for aiding in the mission. There was some controversy surrounding that due to people thinking that it was a PR stunt, which, I mean, that point could be argued all day. But regardless, it was amazing that they were even able to whip up such a contraption in such a short period of time, regardless of the fact that it wasn't used in the rescue mission. But the real bit of crappiness comes with the Twitter exchange that happened yesterday between Mr. Musk and Vern Unsworth, who is part of the team that actually rescued the children from the cave. Mr. Unsworth claimed that the mini sub was a PR stunt and Elon Musk could stick it where it hurt. Which Elon was arguing against all of that on Twitter all week long, but then he took it to a new and completely inappropriate level with his response staying, quote, you know what, don't bother showing the video, that of the rescue. We'll make one of the mini sub slash pod going all the way to K5 no problemo end quote, which is where the tweet should have ended, but he then concludes, sorry, pedo guy, you really did ask for it. And in case you're wondering whether the pedo was a typo or something else, someone called him out for it and Elon responded with, bet ya a signed dollar, it's true. He later deleted all of the tweets. I mean, it's just a completely unfounded and tremendously harmful accusation against a person who was part of the team that was trying to help rescue the children who would otherwise die. Tons of respect lost here for Elon Musk from this exchange, and I'm curious how you all parse this and whether any of it was justified. I'm curious to understand your thoughts on the matter. But for all of the advancements that Elon Musk has helped to make in the field of tech, this was something that is really beyond the pale for me and just kind of leaves me disappointed. But let's jump on into some more sad, kind of depressing future news about tech that's not really going well. Microsoft urges the government to regulate facial recognition on tech. So Microsoft's president, Brad Smith, urged Congress to really reconsider what we're using facial recognition tech for and the implications that it would have on privacy. This is in a blog post he made today trying to discuss this matter on Twitter. He said, facial recognition technology raises issues that go to the heart of fundamental human rights protections like privacy and freedom of expression. These issues heighten responsibility for tech companies that create these products. In our view, they also call for thoughtful government regulation and for the development of norms around acceptable uses. In a democratic republic, there is no substitute for decision-making by our elected representatives regarding the issues that require the balancing of public safety with the essence of our democratic freedoms. Facial recognition will require the public and private sector alike to step up and to act. Obviously, facial recognition technology can be used for things that where people are placed in the government's protected custody, where they're trying to get away from environments where they potentially need to have their identities changed, and this could unleash some sort of fury against them because they can now be recognized in a picture instead of just having their names associated with an address and it can make things more difficult. I'm curious to hear if you have any horror stories of how facial recognition tech could be used and whether you agree with the president of Microsoft and how he thinks that we probably need to limit what's going on here. I know a lot of you are potentially anti-government and you don't want them getting involved in what technology is doing, but I want to create a discussion around that and whether or not you think that some government intervention is just when it comes to the protection of the mass of the citizens. Let's talk about that now, Bill. And now it's time to talk more about angry political stuff that might uh, get people a little bit upset. So Facebook has announced that it won't ban InfoWars from their website, even though they're trying to combat fake news. So Facebook gave a presentation to US media outlets this past Wednesday about how it's combating misinformation and how it's banning fake news sites. Facebook did take questions from reporters on this in which CNN then asked about Infowars and why their presence was still allowed on the site. Facebook in response to this question said, I guess just for being false, that doesn't violate the community standards. I think part of the fundamental thing here is that we created Facebook to be a place where different people can have a voice and different publishers have very different points of view. 
Which, in case you're wondering, some of the points of view of InfoWars is denying that the Sandy Hook school shootings were real, that they were a false flag hoax with actors, and that children may or may not have actually died in that, and then also claiming other things like turning the freaking frogs gay, and a, a whole bunch of other conspiracy theories. And as much as we can meme Alex Jones and all the things that he says, they, I, they do report on some actual news sometimes, but then other times they are just making wild accusations, in which case Facebook also responded that it could be seen that InfoWars pushes out analysis rather than fake news. And so there's a dividing line there. And I'm curious what your perspective is on this. What's the difference between news and analysis? And if analysis is that, then we should call this show Hot Analysis instead of Hot News because we're evaluating what's happening in other places, reporting the facts, and then also giving our speculation on them. So I'm curious whether or not we would fall into that. And if we lie about news, then we could not be fake news. We're fake analysis. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's chat about that. Did you know that Facebook also, besides combating fake news, is making processors? Yes, we've actually reported on this in a previous Hot News where we discussed the possibility of companies like Alibaba, Facebook, Amazon, they're all getting into the semiconductor industry to produce their own chips for their systems that they're actually using. And it appears that Facebook is actually doubling down on this. They actually hired one of Google's lead chip developers, Shariar Rabi. He actually spearheaded a whole bunch of different silicon development programs during his tenure at Google, which he started in 2011. And now he will be the vice president and head of silicon at Facebook. It's yet to be seen what type of chips that Facebook and all of these other major cloud service companies will actually be providing, whether they're going to be AI processors for trying to make sure that their algorithms are working properly, or if they might actually actually be trying to get in on the Intel AMD game? Probably not. It's definitely not going to be that. I just want to speculate. Again, conversation down below. Let's speculate on that. All the conversations today. Woo! Now from vaguely unrelated AI processing news to actual related AI processing news, we have an article out of Hexus talking about how AI targets are now the future of computing rather than Moore's law and trying to pack more transistors into chips. So this was at a symposium in San Francisco last week called Semicon West 2018. In it, there was a whole bunch of high hitters who were talking about all of these different technologies that are coming on. However, Berkeley professor emeritus David Patterson claimed, quote, 95% of architects think the future is about special purpose processors, basically like the Google TPU that exists or what we're talking about with Facebook or Alibaba trying to create their own semiconductor processor for AI development there. And then he says, currently, I think this is what the end of Moore's law looks like. And then a retiree from Intel chimed in to agree saying, I think something beyond today's von Neumann architectures will be helped by something more than more. For example, memristor crossbars may be a fundamental component for neuromorphic computing. The world beyond Moore's law may be about how many kinds of synapses you can put in a given area and how complex they are. So to break that down in the layman speak, which I'm probably not going to do very well because I don't exactly understand everything that's going on there either, the idea that we're going to get more powerful graphics cards and CPUs and gaming PCs in the coming future might not be how everything plays out, but rather they're going to start trying to cross everything thing together to have different ways and processes for developing those things. As we can see in things like NVIDIA's development of the AI that allows you to render frames on slow motion video that don't actually exist, or how they can denoise photographs and videos using artificial intelligence to guess what should be there, and then it actually creates an image that actually looks like it should. These technologies aren't perfect, but as they get developed, the, the amount of processing power that it takes to actually do these things is much less than what it requires to you know, suddenly double them within the next 18 months because they're trying to keep up with Moore's Law. But again, I wanna hear what you think. Do you think Moore's Law is dead? Do you think that it is time for us to find different ways of advancing computing? We've, there's still technological development that's coming with the AI stuff that will allow us to have new advancements taking place, but it might not be in just getting all of that raw power coming out. And then in also AI stuff, Jetson Xavier, which is NVIDIA's chip dedicated to robot stuff, uh, they've revealed the specs on it, and they show that it actually supports PCI Express Gen 4. We reported in a previous hot news about how Vega 20 is also reported to support PCI Express Gen 4. Well, it looks like Jensen Xavier is also supporting that, which means that 
hopefully sometime soon we're gonna get that on mainstream motherboards. It looks like the high-end compute with Epic and Xeon motherboards would likely get this first and then it might trickle down onto us. But PCI Express 4.0 is coming, basically doubles the bandwidth, means that you can use half of the lanes that exist. So you don't have to use full 16 lanes, you can use eight instead on PCI Express 4.0. And now it's time for today's segment of Wait, why do people even ask these questions? So this is an article coming out of Gizmodo talking about how many nukes would it take to send the Earth spiraling off into the sun? It's not a question that you ever knew you needed answered, but it's an answer to the question that you know you need now. That was a terrible way of saying it, but go read it. I'm not even gonna spoil this for you. Go check out the link in the video description for the article and you can read some scientists actually answer that question about how do we destroy ourselves because we're not doing enough already. Huzzah! And that's gonna end our segment. Now it's time for some Apple news. Remember, we reported a few months ago about how MacBook Pro keyboards were getting dust under the keys and it was wrecking the entire thing. And if Apple wasn't claiming warranty status on that, you would have to pay up to $700 to get that replaced. Then Apple instituted a repair program, which everything could get replaced free under warranty. But with the MacBook Pro refresh that came out last week, not only did they upgrade the CPU, they actually put a silicone membrane under the keycaps to help both with noise as they Quote it, it's a much quieter experience, but in reality, they're just making sure that these things don't break so that it, it actually, the dust won't affect the keyboard. Slick moves there, Apple. You don't have to address a PR issue and then you actually just fix it. I mean, good guy on you for fixing it and not completely ignoring it, but turds. Then it appears that MSI has updated the BIOS on one of their Z370 motherboards, the gaming M5, to state that they are supporting new CPUs or a new generation of CPUs rather. So this is coming about the Coffee Lake refresh that we're expecting to come sometime soon, including the 9600K, which has been confirmed by Intel themselves, and then potentially the 9700K, which will be an eight core 16 thread monster of a CPU, or it might be the 9900K. There's so many rumors there, but it is confirmed that we are basically getting a Coffee Lake refresh with this BIOS update coming from MSI on Friday, and there we go. But then, of course, we have to finish on the note about companies not playing nice together. We're speaking, of course, about NVIDIA and their GeForce Partner Program. So this is actually from an original article from Tech Power Up, where their headline is, pay $160 for the Aries sticker, the Mesh GPP landed AIC partners and consumers in. So this is basically coming from the assumption that the Aries Strix Vega 64 that Newegg has on sale is $750, while the normal ROG Radeon Vega 64 Strix edition is $500. And ninety dollars, so there is a hundred and sixty dollar price gap between the Aries and the ROG version of the Vega 64. And while this might appear like this is just a random price hike that Newegg has, it's actually not because there was a couple weeks ago where I was going to report on how Newegg had an Aries card on sale for five hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and I was just going to talk about how Aries actually exists. But it appears that even its sale price, which Newegg actively promoted, was still ten dollars more than this current ROG Vega 64. So there still is a higher price premium to be paid. Now this is definitely as a result of the NVIDIA GeForce Partner Program. They forced ASUS to change their nomenclature for their gaming brand, which is why we have Aries instead of ROG here. The price hike, however, is a little weird. That seems to be more of an ASUS thing than it would be an NVIDIA thing because they're charging more for the AMD card. And it could be that ASUS is trying to recoup the cost of their development of this branding because they had to print it on boxes. They had to spend time coming up with the names and changing all, like it took man hours to actually make the Aries brand, even if it never officially launched and they're still going to use ROG for AMD. It, it actually exists, it took people to do it, and so they have to cover the cost by increasing the price to maybe try to supplement the low amount of units that are gonna be sold. I don't really have a reason for why the price would be higher, but what we can see is that this is a direct result of NVIDIA trying to push out the GPP, and I guarantee you, had they not done this, we wouldn't see the price discrepancy that we have here now. So if you're gonna blame anybody for high AMD prices, blame miners, first of all, but then blame NVIDIA, secondly. Or potentially, as Tank just mentioned to me, this is a higher price because people are viewing it as a collector's item, and so Newegg wants to cash in on that because you're paying a higher price for something that will be a relic of a bygone era, which isn't a bad idea. Tank, buy one so that we can sell it on eBay 
eBay in a decade. And that's where I'm going to end today's hot news. Be sure to let me know what you thought about all of the political topics that we happen to cover today down in the comments down below. Please keep it civil. I beg you for the life of me, please keep it civil. I love you guys. I will see you in the next hot news. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Don't forget to give me a follow over on Twitter at UF Disciple. That's going to wrap it up here. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Hopefully you're smiling because I didn't tick you off with all the political talk. Cheers.